All right. Uh, OK, so we will we'll be doing um, uh, routing protocols today. All right. <clears throat> All right, so before we start, uh, now we have seen uh, IP addresses last week, right? How to subnet them, how to divide them, how to assign them, and so on. And also how the DHCP and NAT works, right? But uh, all, these, all these IP addresses are basically in the machines themselves, right? So by having IP addresses alone, insufficient. We will not be able to get to the internet. The main, uh, the main, uh, the main, what you call that? Uh, the main part of internet will be the routing itself, meaning that how you, how the packets from your machine find their way towards the destination. Right? For example, you open up your your web, web browser and say you want to go to yahoo.com. Right? So how does your browser know where yahoo.com is, right? And then how does the packets from your machine find their, find their way to the, to the web server and then come back? So this is where the routing comes in. So in other words, this is, where, this is the, the job of the routers themselves. We saw earlier when we were looking at devices, routers are one of the most essential networking equipment, right? So what the routers do is what is being covered in this particular chapter, right? Now before we go into routing, we need to understand a little bit about delivery, how packets are being delivered, right? Meaning from how packets are being de uh, delivered from the source to destination, right? So here we are looking at normally two layers, right? The main one is a network layer because routing works in layer 3, OSI layer 3, because that's where the router is. So routing protocols, routing decisions, routing algorithms all work in layer 3. So basically, layer 3 just supervises to make sure that the packet gets delivered to the right place, right? As, as efficiently as possible, as fast as possible also. And the lower layer, the physical layer, is the one which delivers. I mean, it converts your packet into signals and then transmits that, right? So there are two types of packet delivery, the direct and indirect. Direct meaning that the host and destination are within the same LAN, right, within the same area. They do not have to go outside. Right? So if you, this user want to transmit data to a, a destination which is within the same LAN, then the packets are being sent out onto the cable and the packets are, are visible to all the users on that particular LAN. So the packet gets delivered directly to the, the destination. No routing decisions required. All right? And the indirect is the one which whereby the host, whereby the source and the destination are far away. That means the destination of your packet is not in the same LAN it is in a different LAN altogether. And between the LANs, and, and the LANs are, are connected together normally by a routers, right? So now, this, this host send the data to destination, packet, uh, destination address, put in the packet, and then it sends out to the, to the LAN, the packet circulates in the LAN, the, des the, the destination host is not in, in, this, in this LAN, so no one picks it up, comes to the router, the router have to decide now. Right? It, will, it will look at the packet, look at the destination address, and then it will decide, oh, all oh, right, this router knows that the destination host is on this side. Then it will deliver the pack, packet or forward the packet to the other side of, or to the other network, and the packet will be circulated among the other land. And then eventually it will reach the destination. Right? So in this case, the packet delivery is not direct. It has to go through an uh, intermediate, which is the router. So in this case, the indirect means it requires routing decision. Right? Just like you say, if in this class, if you, want, you write a small piece of note, and you want, to, you want to pass a note to a person in this class, what do you do? 
you just piece of, write, write, write a piece of paper, you know where the person is sitting in there, just go and give it to him or her. Direct delivery. Right? But if the person you want to send the note to or letter to is residing in KL, then what do you do? You normally post a letter. Right? So by posting the letter, you are basically making you doing an indirect delivery. It means that you post a letter, it goes to the post office. Post office becomes your router now. Right? It will decide or it will find out what is the best way to send your letter from USM to, to, the, to the address in KL. Right? So that's in, in that indirect delivery. Then related to this is during delivery from source to destination, right? From source to destination, the packets get forwarded multiple times, right? So in the previous case, when you go indirect, it will be forwarded to the router and the router will forward it to the destination. So there's, so there's one hop and two hops, right? In this case, it's only one hop, right? So that, that's not a problem. So the, the here, the, there's no forwarding involved. You just send and then you received. Right here, the router will have to take the packet and then read its content, then decide which, where, how to forward it, then it will send to the next, uh, the LAN, right? So the packet will be forwarded from, from, uh, from source, source, source destination along its route. So for example, from here to go to there, it might take multiple paths, multiple hops from one router to another router to another router and so on, right? And normally for internet delivery, it's always a long process. It's a long journey, right? From, from your machine, it goes to, to yahoo.com. It's not going through one router. You probably go through multiple routers, right? And each router will have this packet forwarding you. Keep a packet, take a packet, read it, and then forward it, read it, forward it, right? So in this case, so packet forwarding requires some kind of machine, right? So you host or router. Host can be doing routing or, or the router itself, right? So they require a machine or equipment, device. Then second thing, it requires some kind of table, meaning that it will, it will need to, 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 to refer to something. When a packet comes, the router has to decide, when a packet is reaches this particular router, you have to decide what to do. Shall I send it on this way, or this way, or this way? How does it decide? It needs to refer to something. Not just, like, just like you send a letter to the post office. You, you send a letter, put in the post box, the letter go to the post office. The post office has some kind of table. Right? If, if the letter comes, say, the address is KL, then you say, okay, KL is in my, is my, is in my, is in my list and there are post offices in KL. Okay, then I will put this uh, letter into a, into a mailbox, which is destination KL, right? If you want to send to a, if you want to send a letter to a place called Amagadon, right? You send a letter, say Amagadon, to the post office. The post office look at the address, Look in the list, look at the world map, there's no such place, right? So in this case, now the host or the router cannot decide. What does it do? It tears up and throw in the, in the, in the wastebasket, right? So in other words, it requires some kind of table. There must be some kind of lookup table. So the, the, the decision, routing decision must be based on a, a table. Right? But, but do you know, during Christmas, maybe not in this country, but uh, in the US and Europe, the children are normally encouraged to write letters to the Santa Claus, right? So the children are encouraged, small small children, of five, six years old, they're supposed to write uh, to Santa Claus what Santa Claus is supposed to give them during Christmas. What gifts do they, what presents do they want? So the parents encourage the chil their children to write letters to the Santa Claus saying you have been good and all these things. Now this is what you want. So what do they do? They write a letter and what is the address of Santa Claus? Anybody knows? The address is simple, Santa Claus, North Pole. Right? And there are some post office, if some post officers in, I think, not, not sure whether Norway or Sweden, they actually accept those, those letters. They have a special mailbox 
created for Santa Claus at North Pole, just to satisfy the kids. Right, so they collect them, somebody will be in Santa Claus and reply to back to them. Right? So that's a special address created. But, but that's, that's not routing. That's a special kind of routing. So anyway, so, so what do we require? We require some kind of table, right? Used by host when packet to send, used by router to forward a packet. And the routing table can be huge. Right? Imagine, for example, like the post office. For it to know which, what is a proper address, it maybe has a, it has a phone book, right? A whole list, all, all, all the, all, it has a list of all the towns and cities in Malaysia, right? So that list can be very long, right? So the, the routing table can be huge. Right? Maybe let me just show you a quick one. So this, this routing table is also existing on routers as well, and so as a whole. So this machine also will have a small routing table, right? A localized version. So let me just show you here. See if you can see this. Can you see this? All right, the top part is basically looking at, uh, we're looking at the host name. Okay, here. Uh, the physical address, DHCP, IP address assigned by DHCP, right? When we have, IP, uh, we have the network mask, default gateway. Okay, default gateway is, means that this machine, the first router is 180.1. Right? That's a router for this particular machine. So any packets which are not on this network will, have to be, will be given to this 180.1 router. Right? The other one is DNS and all these things. Uh, this is a list we were talking about the other day, DHCP, right? the address was obtained today at 9.55, and then it will last for about uh, one hour. Right? OK, anyway. Now you go back here, if you do this particular command, netstat, on your machine, you will notice, you will get this. This is a local routing table on a host, on, on a PC, right? So this PC only know two things. Either send the data to itself or send to the router, right? So you see that the gateway is where you're supposed to send. So there are two addresses. One is the... 10.207.180.1, that's one. And the other one is the 127. 127, if you remember, it was a special address, special address for referring to loopback, meaning the same host, right? And uh, the other one, 10.180.18, is basically its own IP address, right? Own IP address, own IP address. So either, so the meaning that now, if a packet Network packet, a packet comes in with destination address of one of these. Then you apply the network mask and then send to the particular gateway. That's what routing is. Meaning that a, a, a packet, this machine receives a packet where destination address is, let's say, uh, 10 0, uh, 10 0, 10.207.180.18, right? This machine received this particular packet address, IP address, uh, packet with this IP address. So what is it supposed to do? It was supposed to send it to here, which is itself. All right? And then if you look at the one, where is the one? It one. It one is, um, OK. Here, 000, zero, zero means that no address. Anything goes. If, if the machine receives one of these IP addresses with this, uh, if the machine receives packets with IP addresses such as this, then it will pass to this particular gateway. If not, anything else, packets with any other IP address, it will go to this particular gateway, which is the, which is the default, which is the default, uh, which is the default gateway, right? Meaning that those fixed IP addresses, packets with fixed IP addresses, it comes, it will, it will pass either to itself, right, loop back, or send somewhere else, uh, send to the router. But if none of this, then by default, it was, this will be the, the place to send those, those packets to. So that's why I call it the default gateway. Right? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We will look at, we will be looking at this particular table later on. 
But just to show you that a PC also has its own local routing table. Right? So here we can expand. So, so this is the fixed ones. If you want to send data to other IP addresses, then you have to add, you have to add here. And it becomes more and more. Right? Just like, say, the post office. If you have, say, uh, 100 city, 1,000 cities and, and, and towns and villages in Malaysia, later we have become, in, in, in 20 years' time, there have become 2,000 villages and towns in Malaysia, then the, the list becomes increased. So every post, post office cannot be keeping the full list. Right? The, the, the table becomes large and huge. So the, 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 the routing table can become huge. Right? For example, if we, if we are supposed to know, right? for example, if you want to go from this machine to the yahoo.com, if you need to full, we need to go directly, then we, we need to know which path does our packet take, which router does it go to, the router, our, our router at our school, and router at PPKT, at USM, at MIMOS, at TMNET, I don't know where, where it goes, right, to Singapore, Japan, US, and which part of US, maybe it goes through 13, 14 routers. But do we need to know all those routers? If you keep addresses of all those routers, then our routing table will become very large. Right? So we don't keep them. So how to reduce them? How to reduce the size of the routing table is we use these three techniques. Right? Next hop. Network specific and the default method. So we'll take a look at one by one. All right, let's take a look, let's take a look at a very simple network. Right, the one in the bottom. Right. So let's say our routing, routing table is very direct. Right. To say so, these are we have how many, we have uh, we have two machines uh, A and B, and then two routers in between. So host A wants to communicate with host B. It has to go through two routers, right? So the routing table on host A will say that, OK, to go to B, destination B, it needs to pass, it needs to go through R1, R2, then it will reach B, right? So this is the routing table for A on host A, just like we saw on the PC earlier. The routing table of R1 will say, all right, to go to B, you need to just go through R2, then you can go to B. And for R2, the routing table will say, okay, to go to B, I only have to go direct, right? Just don't have to go through any other router in between. Right? So this is the based on direct route. So what we can simplify is that, so the next hop, met next, next hop method says that we only keep the whole address of the next hop. We don't keep the full. We don't keep the full, uh, full route of the destination. Right? We don't say, for example, to go to KL from, 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 from say, our USM to go to KL, we have to go from USM to, to Glugo, Glugo to Georgetown, Georgetown to Butterworth, Butterworth to Ipo, Ipo to KL. We don't say that. Right? We say from, okay, USM to go to KL, first of all, simple, just go to Georgetown first. After that, the router at Georgetown will tell you what to, go, what to do next. Right? That's the next hop method. Right? So in this case, so if you, our routing tables are based on the next hop method, then the routing table A will say, all right, to go to B, the next hop is R1. I'm not giving you the full path. I'm just telling you to go to B, go to R1. And then ask R1. R1 will tell you what to do after that. All right? So R1. Same thing. For R1, you will say to go to B, go to R2. And uh, for R2, to go to B, well, OK, you don't have to go anywhere else because B is already in the particular local land. All right. So now our routing table will be very, very reduced. From three entries, a long path like this, it becomes only one entry. All right. We just tell it what's the next place the packet has to go to, what's the next router it has to go to. Right? So this is the next hop method, which is normally used. All right? So, so if you use the next, okay, so, so this is the next hop, right? We only indicate the next router in this path. So let's say we have now this particular network. 
we have one machine here and four machines here, right? So, S, so if S wants to send data to A, B, C, D, it needs to send, it needs to build its own routing table, right? So routing table in, in, in S will be something like this, if you use the next hop, next hop method. To A, to go to, from S, you want to go to A, the next hop will be R1, right? To go to B, R1 also. To go to C, also through R1. To D, also R1. So we have, a f we have four entries in the table, all indicate different hosts, different destination hosts, but all going through the same router. Right. So what we can do is that we can somehow summarize all this into, say, network-specific address. Right. So what we say is that the routing table keeps only one entry for each network. Earlier, the next hop is we keep one entry for each host. We keep one entry for each host, and we, for each host, we indicate what's the next hop. All right? in, the net, in the network specific, we only keep one entry. We do not keep one entry for one host, but we keep all hosts in the network as a single entry. Right? So because all these machines are belong to the same network, therefore we can take the network address of the four machines and say destination network address is this, N2, then we all of them will go to R1. Right? So how do we do this? We will see that afterwards. That means we take based on the based on the host with the destinations is IP address, it will extract out the network host. Remember the IP address consists of two parts. The left part is the, the host, uh, sorry, the network ID, right? The no, subnet ID, and the, on the right-hand side is the host ID. So we, we, we get the left part, network ID, and then we compare, right? If that's the one which is here, it belongs to the next, uh, next uh, LAN, then we pass on the, the packet to the next uh, to the router next hop right so in other words now multiple destinations or hosts in, in a similar network in the same network will be reduced to one entry now all right okay the third part is the default right so this is basically to list all other networks it means that we cannot be listing we cannot be keeping a list of all the possible addresses or networks, right? So we say this is the one we know, and if it's not one of these, then the default is this, right? So to list all other networks, the special address is used, the 0000. That's what we saw earlier in our drafting table of this machine just now, right? So we say, okay, well, for host A, for user A, if he wants to go to N2 network, he has to go to R1, right? So if your destination address of your packet is uh, N2 network address, then he pass to uh, go through, pass the packet to the R1. If not, not, not N2, then pass it to R2, a different router, right? So we check this, if it's not this, then just go here. So this is the default route normally. Now, just like I say, we have, a, we have a, a router in PPKT, right? Our USM router, the main one. So, data packets being sent from our school, from, from School of Computer Science going to biology, right? It will go through the PPKT router, USM router, and router will decide, oh, this is local. Okay, pass it to the biology side, right? Because he knows. And, but if you send to yahoo.com, Yahoo.com is the address, the, the destination address is not USM address. It's not 161.142 something. Right? So therefore, it must go out. Right? So whatever address which is not local, the default route will be taken. Right? So then it will follow this, this, particular, this particular rule. Right? Any address not recognized, not any of them, we pass to the default route, will be to go to the internet. Okay, so these are three methods used to reduce the size of a routing table. Right, so 
the forwarding process by the router. As I said earlier, the packet is coming in to the router. So, what the router will do is to first thing is to extract the destination address. So, take a look at the packet, look at the destination, extract the destination IP address. Right? And then, destination IP address will be compared, will be searched in the routing table. See if it exists or not, or what to do next. Right? Just like this. Take the IP address and then compare what to do. From there, it will tell you what to do, which next hop it should take. Right? And then, then send it out. All right? So normally, we require at least four columns in a routing table. So first of all, the network mask, the network address, the next hop address, and the interface. Right? We will take a look at this later. All right, so this is an actual example now. Right? So this is a routing table for R1. This R1 has four, four networks connected to it. Right? So, it, so these four networks means if one machine is connected to four networks, it must have four lines, right? Four interfaces, four network cards, right? So each each card, each one will have a separate interface: M M M zero, M one, M two, and M three, right? This interface. So, so this routing table looks like this. So it says that for interface M two, this one, the network address is this. 180, 70, 65, 192, slash 26. So this is a network address. That's a mask, slash 26. And that one is connected to M2, interface M2 of R1. Right? And then M0 is connected to 65, 128, with slash 25, and so on. And then at the end, at the bottom, we have the, the default route. Saying if any network address, any network mask, our next hop will be this particular router. So here the next hop none because these all networks are within direct connection of the router itself. These four are directly connected to this router, so there's no next hop. Yeah, they're local. Any other address which is not this, where do you, what do you use? This router will send it to this particular router, which is here. Right? And how do you send it? Where should you send it to? You should send it to M2. So if you pass to M2, M2 will give me good. Any other packets coming, any other address will pass through this, this particular line and then, then it will go out. All right? So this is what it means. This is how, how to understand or read the network, uh, the routing table itself. So these four columns are normally quite uh, fixed, always there. Right? Some will have more, some will. So some might have more than that. It's the same thing we saw just now. In our tables here is basically the same thing, right? You have the destination, network mask, gateway, and the interface. So here we have metric, the one later on. Right? But these four are quite fixed. Right? OK, so now. So now we have using this table, uh, this particular example. Now let's take a look at how the router will make a decision of a packet coming in and deciding which, where you should send it to, right? So th this router R1 has this table, right? And then we'll take a look at how the router will make a decision. So in this case, now a packet with destination address of 165.140 arrives at R1, right? So it, the packet arrives at here to the router. It doesn't matter where it comes from. And whichever direction doesn't matter. It reaches as long as R1, it reaches the, pack, the router, then it has to make a decision, right? So what R1 will do, it will extract out the IP address, destination IP address. Then it will do the matching, try to match the destination address with the, with the table, right? So what does it do? It will try to apply and see whether the destination address matches the first entry or not. Right? So how does it do that? So the first mask slash 26 is applied to the destination address. 
So what destination address? 180, 70, 65, 140. So this is slash 26. Slash 26 means the first 26 bits is the network ID. You don't touch that. You don't change that. Right? Only the remaining six bits is the host ID. Right? So 26 bits means that this is the first eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, right? So the first is 24 bits. And then we put extra. Uh, sorry, where is it? Ah, uh, here. So the network mass is uh, slash 26. So the first 26 bits will be 1. Right? 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits is 24 plus 2, 26 bits. This is the network mass, slash 26. Right? So this one we apply to the destination address. Destination address is 140. You convert this into uh, binary. So you so the, the destination address will be use a lo logical end operation with a network mask. And what do we get is this. 180, 160, 70, 65, and then 1, 0, 0, 0. Right? Then you convert this, it becomes 1, 2, 8. Right? So now we, so this is the network, this is the, when we apply the mask to destination address, the result is a network address. So we, we, we compare the result with the entry, the first entry in the, in, in the table. So we compare, is this, so does it match with the first entry or not? So 128 does not match with the 192, right? So our first entry is, network address is 192. Our result is 128, so it, it's not the same. Right? So that means this particular packet cannot be sent to cannot be sent to M2. It does not belong to this network. Right? Okay. Fine. So first first the first time we the, the first entry we, we, we try to use is not successful. Right? So we go to the next entry. The next list, the next one, right? Which is the second one here, slash twenty five now. Right, with one two eight. Okay, same same thing we do again, but now it's slash twenty five. So our network mass is twenty five bits. Right? Eight, 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 twenty four plus one, twenty five. And we apply on the destination address. Destination address is <coughs> destination address is the same one earlier, right? No no difference. So we end it, we will get this. And when you convert this into decimal, we get one two eight. And this one two eight, same as the second. Same as the second uh, entry, yes. So in this case, the match to uh, the row two network address matches with the result. Therefore, the packet is forwarded to on interface M zero, right? So this 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 particular packet, the destination, meaning that. 180, 70, 65, 140 destination is actually in, in, in M0, which is here. The, packet, the, the destination host is somewhere here. So you forward it that side. Right? Okay? Another example. This time, different de destination address. All right? Again, this, this, this particular packet arrives at R1. What do we do? Again, we, we follow the same thing, right? We apply the first mask, right? Slash 26 on a destination address. Same thing, slash 26 is 26 bits, all ones for the mask. Apply on this uh, IP address. We convert it into binary. And then this is the result we get. Is the result same as the first entry network? It does not match. Right, the first entry network address is this one. It doesn't match with this. Okay, so we, we go to next next uh, entry. We do slash. To, now we do the second mask. Apply second mask to the destination address. We will get uh, result. Get this again. It does not match with the second entry. So we skip. Go to the third one now. Slash twenty four. And then again we we do we get we get the result of this one. Then this is the then we compare this the, with the network address of the row 3, and we see it's the same. So therefore, this particular packet will be forwarded to 
M3, which is row 3, right? Mean that that particular address belongs to, or rather, the host is somewhere here, right? So we go on one by one, right? So if a packet arrives and you don't, do not match any of them, you go row one by you try by row whether this can be applied or not. This is same or not, same or not. If you cannot get, then you go to the last one, the default one, right? So you cannot match. Then this one will, will, will match because this is the default, right? Then it will be automatically sent to the, the next hop router, right? Okay? So make sure you understand this, right? The step-by-step -step process of how the router applies the, uh, the, the, of how router makes a decision by applying the network mask one by one in the entry, right? All right, let's take a look at this example. We have two routers. This router is connected to four uh, networks, and then it's also connected to the R2 on, on a different interface. Right, so let's say, let's say this is the routing table for R1, right? It says that, okay, so this is network address, slash 26, slash 26, slash 26. So OK, fine. You, so this is network table, starting from 7.0, slash 26 is M0, right? And then 64, 128, 192, or slash 26. And the default means that if packet is, if, if it's not any of these addresses, then it should go to the next hop, which is the R2. R2 is on M4, right? So this is the routing table for R1. Then for R2, what do we do? R2, what we can say is that for R2, you can also keep like this for network address of 140, 24, 710, slash 26 is M4. Uh, sorry, M0. Right? For R2, this, this network address is on M0. 7.64, also M0. 7.128, also M0. 7.192, also M0. Right? So in other words, there will be many and many entries there. So one way to, to, to improve, to reduce the size of the routing table is that we can combine them, aggregate them. So if you look at this, this particular network table, or uh, rather routing table, you will see that this is slash 26. Slash 26 means how many bits are used for the host ID? How many? Host ID. Six, right? Slash 26 means 26 is the left bits, which is the network ID. Network ID. Host ID on, on the right hand side, the remaining bits, which is six. So six bits means how many hosts can we have? To the power of six, which is 64, right? So we can have 64 hosts in this in this subnetwork. And the beginning starting address is 7.0. So 7.0 until 7.63. That's 64 addresses, right? And the next one, so the, the, the next LAN is starting of 64. Also slash 26, then we also another, another 64 addresses here, 64 addresses here, 64 addresses here. So 0 to 63, then 64 to 127, 128 to 191, and 192 to 255. So what we see is that the, the addresses are basically in sequence. There's no missing, right? So what we can do is actually we can combine them, in other words. We combine them from 0 to, 0 to 255. From 0 to the last one will be 255. So 0 to 255 is, 255 requires how many bits? 8 bits. 2 to the power of 5 is 256, right? So 8 bits. So that means the host will have, host ID will have 8 bits if you combine them. So therefore, the network ID will be slash 24. So now if you combine all these four together, which is uh, sequential, sequential, Subnetworks, right? 
we combine them, then becomes 1040.24.7. And then slash 24. That means the first 24 bits are the one which is network ID. The remaining is the host ID. So for M2, it doesn't matter whether you are from 0 to 64 or 1 to 8, it doesn't matter as long as the, your 7, 140, 24.7, you just look at the first three, three components, it's enough for the, I'm going to send it on this particular MO already, this interface. And then it will come to this router, then this router will decide, okay, now I know. If it's between 7, 0 to 63, it will go here. If it's between 64 and 1 to 7, then it will go here, M1, and so on. So as far as R2 is concerned, I can combine all this into one aggregate network address. Right? That's what he's trying to say. This is why you say we send a letter to KL, right? Where KL is in PJ or PJ Selatan, PJ Utara, Sri Kembangan, Shah Alam, doesn't matter. Right? As far as it's concerned, it's a slang on. Right? So from here, our post office, I don't care whether you whether it's going to uh, Shah Alam, Klang, Port Klang, wherever it is, it is slang on. Right? They just group all this, put it, put it, put it, put it into one big box. Right? Because this is our, our decision. Once you go to slang or post office, then they will decide, then they will distribute accordingly. Right? So for as far as this router is concerned, I just have to know, I can combine the, uh, make my routing table as simple as possible. Right? So blocks of sequential addresses can be combined, aggregated to reduce the size of the routing table, as an example here. Right? Okay? <clears throat> All right. Now, the other rule, so in the routing table, there is a rule. Right, so when, for example, like this here, we have multiple multiple network masks to apply and, and different network addresses to use. All right, the question is, in which sequence should we put them? Right, so the rule is that the default, the default route, that anyone, any address should be at the bottom, because the network, because the router basically starts applying. The first entry first, followed by second entry, third, starts applying the network mask from the, the first one. So the first rule applies. If it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fit, doesn't match, then go to the next, one, next line. Doesn't fit, then go to the next one. Right? So this, this one, the any one should be at the bottom. Because if you put this one on top, what happens? If you put this, this one becomes the first one, then the packet arrives of one of these address, arrives here. It looks at this, it says any address. Okay, I don't even have to do the, 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 the masking. You say any address will do. I take this address and directly send to here. Send to the internet. Right? So although it could be a local destination, but it keeps sending it out. Because you say anyone, the, the router does not make any decision. You just look at any address I send here. Any address I send here. Right? So the, the rule is that the longest mask should be on top. The, the shortest mask should be at the bottom. Right? That's the rule. So the longest, so the longest mask always must be the first to be applied. So if your routing, if your router has multiple entries, make sure the longest mask is the first to be entered, or the first to be inserted, right? or first to be tested, uh, applied. Right? So same thing. Right? If you look at this table, the same thing, you can follow this table. Right? So all entries in the routing table are sorted by length of mask, longest to shortest. Right? So 26, 26, 25, it's all the same, okay, doesn't matter. If all the same, then doesn't matter. 26 to 0, 26, 24, right? that's how you put it. Right, so you try to you can you can try to follow this. Right, so if a packet with a one four zero ninety two arrives at R two, where's R two? R two is here. Right. So then, this this particular table will be used, right, to see to decide what to do. Okay. All right. 
So now we have seen the contents of the routing table. Right? We have seen how the routing table is used by the router to make decisions. Now, the question is, this, this, is this routing table fixed or is it dynamic? Right? So routing tables can be two. Either it's static or dynamic. Static means it's fixed. Right? It doesn't change. Whatever entries you put inside are already fixed. So that's static. Contains and the entries are normally manual entries. And the administrator has to enter the route to each destination manually one by one. Right? You go to a router, you configure the router, put in the entries one by one. That's your static routing. Right? It cannot be changed automatically. And normally it's used for a small internet. Right? For example, in, in uh, our USM network will be too large. Uh, for example, our School of Computer Science network is not too bad. Right? We can use a static routing. Uh, within our school is okay, between the floors, between the labs, and so on, right? Because there are not, not too many of them. But the problem is that if the routers change, or if the users change, or the IP addresses change, then we have a problem. Then we have to go and reconfigure the router, right? The other, the other type of routing table is basically dynamic. It means the routing table is not fixed. It, it automatically is updated, right? Dynamically, uh, periodically, and automatically. From time to time, it updates it itself, right? And to be able to do that, to do that, it must be must use some kind of protocol step, right? So if routing, if a dynamic table automatically updates itself, then it will use one of these standard routing algorithms or routing protocols by sharing information between one router and another router. Right? That's what the protocols are. So the uh, common fields in the routing table, right? we have seen this earlier. Right? The first four is the one which are the common ones. And there are normally a few extra ones. Right? The one is basically there are also one field for flex. Right? It tells you whether the next hop router, which is the next hop address, it will normally tell you which is the next address, next router. So one of the flags can say whether the next, whether the next hop router is up and running or not, whether it is, it is actually alive, right? Meaning that we can actually indicate here right, for example like this, this is the next hop. Right? So there will be, there'll be a, a flag here say that this particular router is actually alive. If this particular is down, if the flag says it's down, that means we don't try to send packets to this particular router. We know the next hop router is down, then we don't try to send it. Because we send that, it will, be, it will get lost. Right? So that, that's how we can use it. So flags to indicate where the next hop router is up. And uh, G means that it's for, for gateways to say whether the, 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 the gateway address is another network, it's not a router. The next hop is not a router, but it's next, uh, another network. We can also have a host specific added by, okay, forget about, forget about all this one, it's not very important. Right? To say whether this network address is a, a specific address or not, a host, host address. Then we have an account. Reference count. It basically tells you how many users are using this, part, this route at the moment. Right? How many users, right? How many different IP addresses have gone through this particular route or this particular path? Right? How many, how many users have, have used this path? Then that's the that's count. And the use at the end says how many packets have been transmitted through the, for this router through this destination. Right? So one keeps track of how many packets has gone through. This keeps track of how many different users or different IP addresses has, has gone through this particular uh, route. Right? So you basically keep a traffic, a traffic count. How heavy it is. You want to know how heavy is this particular path. Right? Or is it congested? And that's how you will make a decision. Whether or this particular path is congested. So this is one example. All right, simple one. 
So here the flag says U, means that uh, this is the gateway. Uh, destination 160, it goes to Ethernet 0, right? This is local, right? Uh, if it's, uh, sorry, 153 is here. Uh, it will be sent uh, to the default gateway, right? And, and the default gateway is up, right? Local, this is, this is basically a loopback. If it's any address, it will be sent to 138, 18, 31, 25, right? This is also up. So this particular router is up. That's why it says. And it goes to this interface, which is here. Anyway, uh, last two slides, right? So, so we will need to do, we will need to use routing protocols, right? So what are routing protocols? They're basically a combination of rules and procedures for routers to inform each other of changes in the internet. Right? For, so we mentioned earlier here the dynamic, right? For dynamic routing tables, we will require we will need to use the routing protocols. So basically what they do is that the routing protocols are used by the routers to share information between one another. So each router has its own table, and then they can share the table with others. I say this is what I have, and then you can update your routing table based on what I have, right? So what, why do we need to share information in, in terms of network failure, right? Route, router failure, link failure, or new path or congestion. Right? If this router is busy, or this particular path is busy, I'll inform the other side and say, okay, uh, one, of, one of the paths on my, my router is actually quite busy, congested. Right, then the other router can make a decision whether to pass the data to me or to pass to somewhere else. Right? So, so this will help, help the router to find optimum, optimum path for the packet delivery. So then we use some kind of, of metrics, uh, measurement. So this measurement could be in terms of distance, hops, bandwidth, or delay. All right? So this is the one we saw earlier. Um, Okay. Anyway, we'll see the later. Right? Oh, okay, so it was here. All right, here. So this is the matrix. So there's some kind of measurement. For each, each for, this, for this entry, there's a measurement. And this measurement can be used to, to decide whether or not to, to take this, this particular path. Right? So this measurement can be in terms of distance, how many hops away, how far away it is, What's the bandwidth or what would delay it, it is? So this can be used for extra information to decide, right? So the protocols are basically used to update each other. And the routing basically, protocols basically work in, uh, the routers has to work in a particular area, right? So we call them the autonomous systems. In other words, we, need, we try to group the routers into different groups, different areas. For example, in, in USM, we cannot say all the routers in USM is one big group. It's too many, right? Maybe we say, okay, School of Computer Science, School of Biology, School of Chemistry, one zone, right? The G zone, for example, or the H zone or whatever. So, so this one becomes one, which is called AS, Autonomous System. So a group of networks and routers under a single administration, right? So in this case, the routers in one zone or, or AS will communicate among themselves right, using some routing protocol. So we call this intra-domain routing, right? Within here only. So they will use one protocol for here. This one will use another protocol. This will use another protocol or same protocol. Doesn't matter. But they are quite independent in that sense. Then another, another so between the, the, the zones or between the AS, we will require a different kind of routing now, right? So in this case, normally we want standard protocol to be used between the AS, right? So it's called inter-domain routing. So be to communicate between this group and the other group, there will be one protocol, and the same protocol will be used for between the groups together. Within group, you can use whatever you want because it's quite independent, right? So this is what it meant here. So we, we group together 
the, the, the routers to in, in one zone, AS, 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 right? And then, so they can use whatever, they can share information among themselves in, in, in any way they want, whatever protocol they want is fine. This one can do whatever they want, and they will not, they only exchange information within here, they will not exchange information within here, nope. Right? To exchange between them, then they, they have to appoint someone as a leader. This only this leader can, can exchange with a leader from the other side, and they have to use a special routing protocol between the groups. Right? Okay, then we'll stop here.